Hello and welcome to another GPU review. Today we're diving into the highly anticipated Intel Arc B580, and for our testing we have the Steel Legend from ASRock. This white edition triple fan beauty has finally made its way to my test bench, and I couldn't be more excited to share my findings with you. The B580 has been making waves as one of the best value GPUs currently on the market. With 12GB of VRAM and performance that rivals NVIDIA's RTX 4060, it's definitely worth a closer look. In this review, we'll run benchmarks, explore its performance and features, and check out the card's temperatures and power draw. Now without further ado, let's dive in. While my review may be a bit overdue, I've got some insights to share, especially if you're considering buying an Intel Arc B580. One major finding comes from Hardware Canucks, who revealed a significant performance bottleneck when the B580 is paired with older CPUs. In certain titles, the performance drop is so severe that gameplay becomes nearly unplayable. Thankfully, Intel is aware of the issue and is actively investigating whether it's a hardware or software problem. For those planning an upgrade, this is a key consideration. Now let's take a closer look at the ASRock Steel Legend version of the B580. The GPU boasts a sleek and modern design, featuring a triple fan configuration with three 90mm fans, high-density fins, and a nickel-plated copper base for optimal cooling. The large cooler is complemented by a metal backplate and dual 8-pin power connectors. The aesthetics are further elevated by RGB lighting on all three fans as well as a Steel Legend logo illuminated on the front. If you're into customization, the GPU includes an LED switch and an ARGB header, though most users may not utilize the latter. Controlling the RGB lighting requires downloading ASRock software. Another standard feature is the zero decibel fan mode, which keeps the fans completely silent during light workloads. For display connectivity, the card offers three DisplayPort 2.1 ports and one HDMI 2.1 a port for modern high resolution and high refresh rate monitors. Overall, the build quality seems to be very good and the design is visually appealing, but how does it perform? For testing, we focused mostly on synthetic benchmarks, as well as exploring the card's frame regeneration capabilities using Marvel Rivals, which supports the latest XESS2. We had 4G decoding and resizable bar during testing enabled, which gave us also a performance boost in benchmarks. Here's how it performed. In 3D Mark Steel Nomad in 1080p, we had 79 frames on average. In 1440p, we had 55 frames on average, and in 4K, we had 30 frames on average. We run the same benchmarks with an RTX 3070 for comparison, which gave us 92, 60, and 31 frames on average, respectively. It was very close in performance, especially in 4K resolution. Testing frame generation with 3D Mark, we were limited to XESS 1.3, which gave us about 200% more performance in 4K and 150% more performance in 1440p. Comparing the two outputs frame by frame, it was very strange that we had better quality with frame regeneration on. It was like the image quality was smoother in my opinion, but let's see how it performs in a real game and if that is true. I want to mention here that we tested both on 10th generation Core i9 and Ryzen 3000 CPUs and we got exactly the same results. Now, in order to test the XESS2, we used Marvel Rivals in 4K resolution using different settings. We will be showing the performance of the 3070 with DLSS side by side so you get an idea of the performance. The B580 and 2160p native gave us a bit over 30 frames. Using the super resolution and ultra performance mode, the frames jumped to well over 100 frames but if we compare the quality it was not that good in my opinion. You can immediately tell the difference because objects were not as detailed as you can see for yourself. That was fixed though. When we changed to balanced mode, we still had about 80 frames, but also a sharp and detailed image render. I mean, when you compare side by side, you still notice the difference, but just by looking at one image, it is barely noticeable. So that gave us basically about three times the frames with a very small impact on quality. You do also have the option to reduce latency, but I personally could not notice any difference due to lack of gaming experience. Now comparing the frame generation of the two cards, the B580 had a better FPS performance upscale, but the quality of the frame generation was much worse. The DLSS is much more mature and had more detail to it. On the other hand, although the performance of the Intel Arc B580 was very close to the RTX 3070, the real-time ray tracing performance wasn't particularly impressive. It was far behind in performance and using direct X-ray tracing gave us also similar results compared to the 3070. Unfortunately, overclocking is not so easy for the B580 cards. 
To make matters more complicated, the newest drivers lack the control center as well, which is crucial for fine-tuning settings and monitoring performance. MSI Afterburner does not support the Intel GPUs either. Luckily, I found a workaround by downloading the driver version upon release, which gave me basically all the tools I was looking for. I don't know why Intel decided to remove these features, but this is an area where Intel need to improve in order to deliver a complete user experience. The ASRock Steel Legend B580 delivered consistent performance during all benchmarks and its boost core clock was stable at 2850 MHz. Apart from stress testing where the GPU was running at 2500 MHz for some weird reason. I find also funny that although this and almost every other card is marketed as an OC model, they have practically the same boost clock as the Intel's B580 card. Temperatures were actually impressive, maxing out at just 64 degrees Celsius during stress testing with very low fan usage, and the power draw was at 145 watts. During gaming benchmarks, the temperatures were much lower at about 62 degrees Celsius and 130 watts power draw. Despite the advertised 190 watt TDP, the GPU did not exceed 130 watts during gaming. A peak of 150 watts was observed only during stress testing the card, which may be also the reason why it did not boost to 2850 MHz. Still, this makes the B580 very energy efficient, and I can see some potential overclocking the card, which I will do soon, so stay tuned. So is the ASRock Steel Legend B580 worth your money? In my opinion, yes, but not for everyone. The GPU offers excellent cooling, quiet operation, and attractive RGB lighting to match your build. Plus, ASRock is one of the few third-party vendors offering a white version of the B580, making it a unique choice for aesthetic-focused builds. That said, there are a couple of downsides. The card has coil whine here and there, though it's not loud at all. The advertised overclocked feature is not there, and more importantly, the poor performance with older CPUs is a significant concern. Additionally, the lack of proper overclocking support and the incomplete driver software experience are disappointing for the time being. If you're building a new budget-friendly system, the B580 is a fantastic option. It will be hard to beat its performance at that price point. However, if you're upgrading an older rig, I'd recommend doing thorough research or waiting for Intel's fix. Overall, the B580 stands out as a solid mid-range GPU that punches above its weight in value and performance. Regarding the Steel Legend version with its sleek design, efficient cooling, and quiet operation, it's a great choice for gamers looking to game at 1080p or 1440p, adding some good aesthetics to their build. As we saw in some scenarios, it can even run smooth in 4K resolution with frame regeneration. Just keep the CPU compatibility issue and software limitations in mind if you're upgrading older hardware. That's all for today's review. Don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe and maybe I revisit the B580 with some overclocking and undervolting content. See you in the next video.